Hi, second grade. Welcome to reading lesson 10. I can't believe it's already reading lesson 10. These last 10 lessons have flown by, but you have grown in so many ways. I'm so proud of your hard work. Let's take a look at some of the things you learned during this unit because you're going to use these ideas to help you on a project today. We started off the unit by thinking about how characters respond and we grew our thinking to grow beyond how they respond with feelings but to think about how they respond by making choices to get the things that they want. We used a somebody wanted but so then chart to help us keep track of that character response. We reviewed how words and illustrations work together. Again, we moved beyond a character's feelings and we began to think about how the words and illustrations work together to teach us about other things about the character to teach us about the setting and notice when the setting changes. And we learned how to look at the words and illustrations to really help us understand the plot or the things that are happening. Because what's happening is not, excuse me, is not always what's in the words. We have to look at the illustrations too. And finally, we talked about story structure and how a story does not just stay flat. It builds and it grows. And we learned that there are special key details that are usually found at the beginning, like meeting the characters, understanding the setting, and getting introduced to the problem. And then in the middle, there are so many things that happen as the characters begin to respond to the problem and make choices. The settings might change and all the action happens. And then at the end, where the problem is resolved and the lesson might be learned or the characters might change, everything begins to wrap up at the end. Today, you're going to use all of those things that you've learned to make a special project. Here's your goal. I can use a variety of strategies. That means all of the things that you've learned to demonstrate my understanding of fiction stories. Let's get started. Here's the story that we're going to read. If you brought home your copy from school, I want you to have it in front of you. If not, Go ahead and um, it'll be on the Nearpod slide later and you can go ahead and read it along with me on the slide. Let's read the story together. It's called The Paper Airplane Contest. Brian was a second grade student at Blanton Elementary School. He loved reading and playing with airplanes. One day his teacher, Mr. Moore, decided that the school should have a paper airplane contest. Every student would design and throw a paper airplane. The student whose airplane went the farthest would win a special prize. Brian really wanted to win the contest. He thought hard about what he had to do. When Brian got home, he found his book called 10 Ways to Make a Paper Airplane. He took his book and a stack of paper outside to his backyard. First, he looked in his book and studied the ways to make different airplanes. Then he tried making one of the airplanes the book showed. When he threw it, it didn't go very far. He took another sheet of paper and tried making a different kind of airplane. When he threw it, the airplane went a little farther. Brian kept folding different kinds of airplanes and throwing them. Some of them went very far and some did not. Finally, when Brian had tried all the kinds of airplanes in the book, he walked up to the airplane that had flown the farthest and picked it up. This would be the airplane for the contest. The next day at school was the contest. All of the schools lined, uh, all of the students lined up, lined up outside on the playground and took turns. Some planes flew far and others did not. Finally, it was Brian's turn. He walked up to the line and threw his plane. It went flying farther and farther until it landed 10 feet past everyone else's planes. The whole class cheered. Brian was the winner. Mr. Moore gave him a wonderful prize, a toy airplane. Wouldn't it be fun to have a paper airplane contest? Maybe that's something you and your friends can do um, if you are able to get together again soon. Okay, my friends, here is going to be your project for today to show that you have learned all the important things that we've talked about in this, in this unit. First, you're going to read the paper airplane contest. We just did that together, but I want you to read it again just so you truly really understand the story. Then on a blank piece of paper or a chart piece of paper or whatever materials you have to work with, 
I want you to create an image that could represent the structure of a story. So like we talked already about using a story mountain. So maybe you're gonna draw a mountain on your paper, or maybe you're gonna draw a roller coaster. We've talked about that one too. But there are other ideas you might use, like a bike ramp. Notice how the story start, or notice how the bike ramp starts small at the beginning, grows in the middle, and then comes back down at the end. There are lots of different ideas out there, so be creative as long as it starts small in the beginning, grows in the middle, and gets smaller at the end. Then I want you to add the key details to your story structure image to show what happens at the beginning, middle, and end of the paper airplane contest, just like we did on our scaffolded and unscaffolded story mountain. I want you to be sure to include the title of the story in your poster. When you have it all done, I want you to see if you can take a picture and send it to your digital teacher or give it to your digital teacher in whichever way that they decide is best. Be sure to come back to the Nearpod lesson though because I want you to make sure that you tell me all about what you decided to create. Okay, writers, go off and have a great time being creative and come back to the Nearpod lesson whenever you're finished.